The Bible is one book with many little books in it. Like how Narnia has a set of chronicles that are many books. Today our story from the Bible is from the book of Matthew. Matthew is the New Testament, the scriptures about or after Jesus. Matthew is one of our four Gospels. It was written sometime between 80 and 90 AD, which is about 50 to 60 years after Jesus died. Jesus had a lot of disciples. Everywhere he went, people came and listened to him. There are lots of stories of Jesus visiting specific disciples in various cities. However, there were 12 disciples that went with him everywhere he went. These disciples were his closest companions, who he trusted with the most of his lessons. A man named Judas was one of these disciples. We don't know tons about Judas. What we know isn't particularly flattering. His descriptions in the gospel are short and relate to greed and jealousy. A lot of people who research Judas try to make guesses based on the limited information we have. Here is what we know. Judas decided to go to the Sanhedrin, who was the high council led by the high priest, to judge over the law for the Jewish people and turn Jesus in. He received a payment of 30 pieces of silver. The members of the Sanhedrin did not like Jesus. Again, we don't know all the reasons why. From the text, we assume a couple of things. Jesus was critical of their leadership, and no one likes to be criticized. Jesus was critical of the way the Jewish faith was being shaped by these leaders. He didn't like their emphasis on rules over the principles that created the rules. For instance, They thought healing someone who was seriously or critically ill on the Sabbath day was breaking the law, even though the law makes exceptions for life and death needs, including feeding livestock and caring for the ill. There may have been some in the Sanhedrin afraid of losing their power. There may have been some who just thought he was preaching a false religion. There may have been some who were afraid that Jesus was attempting to start a revolt against Rome, since a lot of people were angry at Rome, and they may have been afraid of Rome coming in with troops and violently putting down a rebellion. We also know that some members of the Sanhedrin were disciples of Jesus, including Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. We don't know how public they were with their discipleship, however. Similarly, we don't know Judas' motive either. Some people think he just wanted the money, which is emphasized in Scripture because of his tendency towards greed. Some people think something soured his opinion on his teacher, and he decided he wasn't telling the truth. Some people think Judas was a member of a group called Zealots. These people, who strongly believed that Rome needed to be kicked out of the Holy Land and that the Jewish people needed to reclaim their kingdom. The Zealots thought the Messiah would be like King David. He would come with an army and bring rebellion and war. Since he would be a righteous leader, a descendant of King David... God would once again support God's people in battle, and they would once again have their own nation under a godly king. If Judas was a zealot, it is possible that he thought after Palm Sunday's big crowd turnout that if Jesus was arrested, the people would rebel and free Jesus, who could transform into their general and overthrow the Romans. Whatever his reasoning... Judas went to the high priest and said he could give him evidence to arrest Jesus for heresy, the charge the Sanhedrin could prosecute. After the Passover celebration, Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Judas didn't join them. He came later with soldiers. Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss. This kiss was to indicate who it was they were to arrest. 
Jesus was tried, beaten, and crucified. He died and was laid in a stone tomb. The disciples hid because they weren't sure if they would be arrested next. Judas was beside himself. He brought the money back to the high priest. Perhaps he didn't realize that Jesus was going to be killed. Perhaps he realized money wasn't worth his friend's life. Perhaps he saw that he was wrong about the Messiah being a military general. He tried to give the money back. The high priest wouldn't accept it. And even if he had, in some ways it didn't matter. The deed was done. It couldn't be undone. Judas died before the resurrection because he was so sad and so sorry. So his story ends with yet another mystery. When Jesus comes back, he forgives his disciples who ran away. He forgives Peter who denied even knowing him. There is a chance that if Judas was really sorry that he had made the wrong choice, despite his reasoning, Jesus would have forgiven him. Maybe Jesus forgave him anyway because of his remorse. But ultimately, the story of Judas is one of a bad choice and a bad consequence. Some of our choices can't be undone, but God will stay faithful through the consequence. Mm-hmm.